Welcome to Furniture Industry News, the daily dispatch from FurniturePodcast.com that brings you the very latest from the spirited world of foyers to the final touches of drapery. In today's episode, we're peeling back the layers on some of the most fascinating stories shaping our industry, from the ever-evolving preferences of furniture sizes, how upholstered furnishings are adapting to the consumer's life stage, to intriguing insights into the buying plans for sofas and sectionals in the first part of the year. We'll delve into how brands are walking the thin line between personalization and privacy, striking a chord with consumers without stepping into the realm of the unsettling. The intriguing revolution brought about by machine washable rugs takes center stage as we dissect its impact on the rug industry. We'll also tackle the complex web of mergers and acquisitions redefining the bedding landscape and wrap up with a look at why the dining category is enjoying a resurgence at a time when others tread a slow path. Join us as we unfold the stories that are currently buzzing within our community. This is Furniture Industry News, where we furnish you with knowledge to stay ahead of the curve. In the realm of upholstered furniture, the old adage of one size fits all is fading into oblivion. The era of McMansions, sprawling residences of the wealthy suburbs, once gave rise to large scale sofas and chairs tailored for commodious living spaces. However, as we forge ahead into the year 2024, what's clear is that the furniture industry thrives on versatility and the ability to cater to individual taste and space requirements. Today's upholstery market is as varied as the consumers it serves adapting not just in style and fabric, but also in scale. It seems that the size of one's furniture has become a reflection of their life stage and household size. Families with larger homes might lean towards expansive, modular sectionals like the award-winning Ellipse from Vojnert Furniture. In contrast, those embracing smaller, more efficient living spaces, often in urban settings, are gravitating towards multifunctional pieces that marry style with utility, such as the innovative tiny sofa, a design marvel equipped with built-in storage and the ability to transform into a bed. Interestingly, in this dynamic landscape, it is the senior demographic, those 65 and above, who are emerging as the connoisseurs of upscale furnishings. Perhaps a blend of me time and the impulse for new beginnings, this demographic is reshaping the upholstery market with discerning purchases that accommodate both grand family gatherings and the snug comfort of downsized living. It is a tale of two scales— one looking for quality and grandeur, the other for smart, space-saving sophistication. Across the Atlantic in Poland and back here in the United States, we see manufacturers responding to these diverse needs with their own creativity. The big question teetering on their thought process, how can upholstery help people live better, regardless of the square footage they call home? As we continue to navigate through an era marked by personalization, the furniture industry is taking note. Upholstery is no longer just about sitting, it's about living uniquely attuned to each consumer's phase of life. Turning our attention to the living spaces of consumers, it's clear that the heart of the home continues to beat strong with characteristic comfort and style, as reflected in the latest buying plans for sofas and sectionals. According to new insights backed by research sponsored by Synchrony, a whopping 36% of consumers have indicated plans to purchase a sofa or sectional within the first half of the year. Peeling back the layers of these findings, it's intriguing to note that seating preferences aren't randomly distributed across all age groups. Young consumers, for instance, showed a remarkable interest in this segment with the intent to purchase spiraling between 38% and 47%. This pivotal demographic's engagement with the furniture market could provide direction for future product development and marketing strategies. Moreover, the study sheds light on an array of preferences that resonate across the consumer spectrum. The eternal debate of motion versus stationary furniture, the classic leather versus fabric conundrum, and the increasingly pertinent choice between in-store versus online purchasing all paint a picture of a diverse and discerning market. Interestingly, these trends only skim the surface of what manufacturers and retailers ought to consider in their roadmap for the upcoming months. The texture of individual preference interwoven with sensible economics suggests a narrative of preparedness and adaptability. As we look ahead, bearing in mind these insights, 
We can gauge the shifts and nudge the furniture industry towards a more consumer-centric paradigm, one that prioritizes not just aesthetic or functionality, but attunement to the changing desires of their clientele. With that, we pivot forward, bearing witness to a living room landscape that continually redefines itself with the eclectic tastes and practical demands of the modern consumer. In this era of technology-driven shopping experiences, where online carts know more about our preferences than our closest friends, the question on everyone's mind is, how much personalization is just right? A recent Global Consumer Trends report sheds light on this delicate balance. Findings from the report reveal that while online shoppers are indeed open to personalized interactions, there's a fine line brands must walk, go beyond it, and they risk venturing into territory that can only be described as creepy. For instance, if you've ever been online and seen an ad pop up offering a discount on a product mere minutes after you've browsed, well, for 54% of consumers, that's teetering on the brink of discomfort. However, consumers seem to have a sweet spot for certain types of personalized communication. Take the example of a bespoke birthday offer. 84% of the surveyed shoppers received it with open arms. Similarly, product suggestions based on past purchases scored a thumbs up from 80% of consumers. This indicates a preference for personalization methods that enhance the shopping experience without feeling intrusive. Not all personal touches are winners, though. A significant 64% of consumers gave a thumbs down to random messages from brands based on geographic location, especially if there wasn't a prior relationship. The message is clear. While familiarity can be endearing, too much of it from an unfamiliar brand is just plain unwelcome. So, as we steer through the tricky waters of brand customer relations, it's essential for companies to listen closely to consumer sentiment. Personalization might be the current captain of the commerce ship, but respecting a customer's boundaries is the true north that always needs to be followed. Let's not forget, in this ocean of data, relevance and consent are the beacons that keep the friendly tie between a brand and its customer shining bright. The notion of machine-washable rugs might seem like a small ripple in the vast ocean of home decor. Yet, this innovation spells a sea change for the rug industry and consumer lifestyles. Introducing convenience to an age-old homeware category, the machine-washable rug concept crafted by Ruggable in 2009 catapulted into popularity, ensuring that the once simple and static area rug could now live up to the dynamic needs of modern living. These rugs are not just about the ease of cleaning spills and stains. Their arrival on the market stirred the existing players into reevaluating their product lines. Long-standing brands such as Surya and Loloi Rugs have embraced the trend, adding these practical items to their assortments. They recognize that the machine washable feature isn't just a novelty, it's a response to genuine consumer demand for multifunctional and easy care home furnishings. What truly stands out is how these rugs are meeting consumers where they are. Whether it's in a bustling family home where spills are part of daily life, or in a stylish urban apartment where space comes at a premium. Washability aside, these rugs also feature prepossessing designs and styles that align with changing aesthetic preferences. However, it's not just about design. Durability remains a talking point. Remarkably, these rugs have been crafted to withstand multiple wash cycles, though longevity may vary based on individual household usage. The adaptability of such rugs transcends purely domestic settings to commercial realms, where robustness and ease of maintenance are highly prized. Machine washable rugs have inarguably widened the horizons for manufacturers and retailers alike. The core demographic purchasing them, families and pet owners seek practicality without sacrificing style. The stark increase in choices for the consumer hints at a vigorously competitive market, pushing innovation in design, functionality, and durability. As we unravel the threads of this evolving trend, it's clear that machine washable rugs aren't just another item on the list of home essentials. They are the fabric interweaving practicality with contemporary living, a testament to the ever-evolving nature of our homes and the industries that furnish them. In the realm of slumber, where comfort meets commerce, the bedding industry is witnessing a significant reshuffle that has market spectators and industry insiders alike engaging in animated discussions. Today, we take a closer look at the bedding sector through the prism of recent mergers and acquisitions, a dance of alliances that speaks volumes about the evolving landscape of sleep products. 
Let's start with a headliner that's been the buzz of the sleep world. Temper Sealy International's colossal $4 billion bid to acquire mattress firm, a deal winding its way through regulatory scrutiny with expectations to finalize in the latter half of this year. This planned union, a topic of intrigue since its whisperings back in late 2020, is positioned to radically alter the market's contour, but the tapestry of betting consolidation extends beyond this giant leap. Turning our gaze to Ashley Home, an affiliate of Ashley Global Retail, we noticed the ink drying on their acquisition of Resident Home. This merger, discreet in its financial details, resonates with strategic coherence, melding Ashley's billion-dollar betting revenues with the predominantly direct-to-consumer sales model boasted by Resident. The seal? Swiftly stamped, just a day post-announcement. Past these headline-grabbing mergers lie a series of nimble maneuvers charting the past year's activity. The merger map includes Sleep Country Canada snuggling up with Casper Sleep's Canadian Enterprise, Purple and Intellibid coupling in an all-stock accord, and Carpenter Co.'s twin acquisitions of Rectacell and NCFI Polyurethane's Consumer Products Division, stitching together a more robust global presence. The betting industry's mergers and acquisition bingo card beckons and prompts a strategic question. What defines the next square to be stamped? With deals under wraps and others shimmering on the horizon, the betting sector's consolidation hints not merely at growth, but a strategic pivot towards synergy, diversification, and heightened competitive edge. As we pull back the covers on this topic, one thing rings clear. The betting industry is anything but asleep at the wheel. Stay attuned for more industry reverberations in upcoming episodes. In recent industry insights, dining furniture is emerging as a focal point for case goods producers, demonstrating resilience and even surpassing bedroom furniture in consumer demand. What's driving this trend? It seems that in tighter economic times, the dining room, a more visible and communal area compared to the privacy of the bedroom, is garnering greater attention and allocation from homeowners' budgets. This reflects a strategic shift in consumer priorities, where the spaces that guests frequent take precedence in terms of spending. Napa Furniture Design's Vice President Bobby Papazian shares that while their brand has been historically bedroom-centric, dining options are expanding rapidly, signaling a potential future balance between the two categories. The story at Vaughn Bassett echoes this shift as they re-enter the dining space, introducing new collections to capitalize on this growing segment, despite the broader economic concerns impacting housing and discretionary spending. Micah Swick, president of Bernard's, subtly notes, The dining room is not tucked behind a door. It's a space ripe for showcasing personal style and serving as the stage for social gatherings. Thus, dining tables and chairs are evolving into statement pieces that reflect individual style and host crafting appeal. This inclination towards dining spaces has not gone unnoticed by retailers. As Ian Geltner from Steve Silver elaborates, buyers are craving fresh looks and added functionality, such as hidden storage in their dining furniture selections. Similarly, Walker Edison finds that customers are not just looking for aesthetic appeal, but also for versatility in their dining furniture, reflecting the modern consumer's appetite for multi-purpose living. This focus on dining isn't to say that bedroom furniture is being left in the dust. It still holds significant weight in the industry, especially in terms of investment pieces over the long term. However, the immediacy of refreshing a home's main gathering space takes the front seat in today's furniture landscape. Moreover, with a push towards space-saving designs, as mentioned by Greenington's president, Yang Lin, Dining pieces that offer flexibility and style are particularly appealing to urban dwellers. The message here is clear. In an industry that's constantly adapting to consumer needs and economic tides, dining furniture is having its moment in the spotlight. It's a reminder for furniture retailers and designers alike to remain attuned to where consumers are most engaged in their homes and to adjust their offerings, steering with the ripe opportunities that dining affords in the current market landscape. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Furniture Industry News from FurniturePodcast.com. Today, we gave an overview of the shifting scale in upholstery, delved into consumer insights on furniture buying strategies for the upcoming months, and contemplated the delicate dance between personalization and privacy in brand interactions. 
We also explored the disruptive potential of machine washable rugs, navigated through the complexities of the bedding industry's consolidations, and understood why dining furniture continues to thrive in the current market. Thank you for joining us and staying engaged with the latest insights and news from the furniture industry. We hope the discussions have provided valuable perspectives for your business strategies and planning. Be sure to tune in to our next episode, where we will continue to cover the pulse of the industry, bringing you news, trends, and expert analyses that matter to you. For FurniturePodcast.com, it's been a pleasure to be your source for furniture industry news. Take care and see you on the next episode.